The Teen in Yellow is a book within Signalis. It appears multiple times throughout the game at vital plot points. The book is inspired by a real-life book of the same name that was written by Robert Chambers. Signalis has many parallels and references to the actual book throughout the course of the game. Warning, this video may contain spoilers about Signalis. If you have not finished the game and do not wish to be spoiled, then finish the game before continuing. With that warning out there, it is now time we cover the basics of the King in Yellow in Signalis to establish a starting point for deeper theory. The King in Yellow holds vital importance to the plot and story of Signalis, and theorizing regarding it can help us get closer and closer to actually understanding the full plot of the game. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. To begin, we should review all the times in-game that the book appears. To start, the first time that we see this tome is in the beginning of the game. Following Elster leaving the Penrose, she descends down a hole and finds another hole which she crawls through to emerge in what later turns out to be Arion's room. It is within this room that we first find the book, located on the ledge of a desk, we must interact with it in order to progress. Doing so, it states, An ancient looking tome is lying on the table. It feels like it is calling to me. At this point, the book has six seals on it. Over the course of the game, this number will decrease. Picking it up will cause a cutscene to play, and will begin the S23 Serpienski section of the game. The next time we see this tome is in the library within S23's protector layers. After a short puzzle, we free the book from a book storage machine. Upon obtaining the book, we find that it is hollowed out, and within it lays a piece of the astrolobe that was required to open the box that we found within Adler's room. Following this, it is on our first visit to the shores of the Isle of the Dead, before entering nowhere, that we are able to see it again in a small niche. The book is just outside our reach, however, we can see that it has three seals on it during this time. Later on, during our return to the shores of the Isle of the Dead, after Elster jumps down the hole in the Penrose, after the fake ending, we again see the book. This time it is in the sea, and it has two seals on it. Our final time seeing the book is at the end of the game, when we again return to Arion's room. This is when we actually learn that it is Arion's room, and the book lays exactly where it did at the start of the game. Picking it up lets us leave Arion's room, this time the book has no seals left on it. From here we should cover some basic lore concepts regarding the King in Yellow. To start, within the lore of Signalis, a small group of important characters are established as having once read or seen this text. Obviously, during the events of the game, Alster opens the book twice. First at the very beginning of the game when it has seals upon it, and again at the end of the game. Aside from Alster, it was known to be seen by Arion when it was on display at the bookstore before being confiscated. And in a dream of Arion's, her mother once took notes from the cane yellow. One of the two Edos also interacted with the book, Arion doesn't remember exactly which one, meaning it could be either. Next, it should be quickly noted that the book is considered a banned book by the nation, and upon discovering its presence, it was confiscated from the Edos. However, it is unknown how they got it, how long they had it, and if they read it during the time they had it. Next, we should review the in-game depiction of the book. The appearance of the book in-game is a clear reference to the cover of the actual book, However, it does sport some differences, most notably is the change of the back cover, from a stylized backing to a tesseract, or the rituals design. And the addition of the three stars that are usually connected with either the nation or by a resonance is added to this cover. Over the course of the game, the book slowly loses seals. The exact events that caused the loss of seals is currently not known or theorized on. Neither is what exactly this means. However, it is known that the seals on the book are the same basalt tabs that we gather throughout nowhere. Next, we should cover the basics of some theories regarding the tome. First, some theories hold that the book may actually hold powers over either reality or the reader. However, these theories differ on why exactly it has such powers and what these powers are. Here are some examples of those theories. Some have theorized that due to the book's ability to manipulate the reader in most depictions, this ability likely carries over to Signalis. If this is the case, then if a bioresonant individual crossed paths with the book, then the book would be able to distort them and influence on them, meaning that any changes in reality would be due to the corruption of their own mind being made manifest by the book and their bioresonant powers. Another theory regards the ritual, as some have theorized that due to the depiction of the ritual in the back of the book, then the book is what teaches others how to do the ritual. Finally, we have the distortions by the King in Yellow. Some have theorized that the book is able to distort reality on its own, or that the King in Yellow is an actual, manifested bioresonant individual who is responsible for the events of the game, at least in part. 
Granted, if he was manifest, it should be noted that he would not be human, but rather a being of immense power, possibly something that looks nothing like any normal creature we are used to. To conclude today's video and the basics, we should quickly preview the allusions to the King in Yellow within the story. In game, there are many characters who exhibit parallel structures within each other. This can be mainly seen in similarities between Issa and Alistair, Falk and Arion, however many other exist. Within the King in Yellow, it holds the ability to influence characters to assume the mantle of a character within the book, which can be seen as Elsa or Issa assuming each other's roles, or whatever parallel is particularly focused on. I Wear No Mask, this quote by Adra right before the final act of the game, is a direct quote from the King in Yellow, stated by the protagonist of the story, The Mask. Finally, the Calibri's Corrupted Text. Within the Calibri's Corrupted Text lies the following quote, which is a reference to the King in Yellow story. Strange is the night where the dark stars rise, and strange moons circling through the sky. Songs that hide should sing where the king's rags blow, must die unheard. Songs of my soul, my voice is dead. You die unsung like tears unshed. The meaning of this quote in the particular context of the Calibri's is currently not known. And with that, the basics of the King in Yellow have been established. As should be very apparent from just looking at it, there are a lot of important concepts in the game that the King in Yellow connects to, ranging from bioresonance, the entire plot of the game, major plot points, perhaps even giving a actual explanation as to why the hell exists, and it will require much more theorizing. Over the next few days, I will be doing exactly that, focusing on the individual aspects of this video to shine a greater light on them, and hopefully get us all closer to a greater understanding of the game as whole, possibly even how the events of the game actually occurred. But for now, this is all I've got. If you want to see this in an organized fashion, like always, the wiki page that I made for this video will be linked below. If you'd like to talk to other Signalis fans about the lore, or just in general, I have two discords linked below. My main discord, VSL, and a Signalis discord, called the Unofficial Signalis Discord. They are both cool places, and I suggest you check them both out. However, specifically, the unofficial Signalis Discord has a, quite a large amount of very interesting things in it that I'd like to quickly give a little uh, shout out to. Um, there is the new Zomboid mod by Swift that is still a work in progress, but is quite cool to see. There are cool fanfic writers like Jade and Keo who have been creating great little stories about the Signalis universe. There's been some great modding efforts being made by me and Apneok, who are both trying to create mods for Signalis. We've had some varying amounts of success, and the lore convos in Unoff are quite amazing. We've made great progress, and they're part of what inspired the ideas behind this video even being possible. So if you have the time to join in a Discord account, I'd greatly appreciate if you popped over to Unoff. Finally, once again, thank you to Skelly for supporting my membership. Your contributions help make this series possible. And thank you to all of you who watch and enjoy these videos. I appreciate all your comments, all your likes, and everything you guys do. You guys are great people. So with that, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.